Hello and welcome to The Faith Life with me, Kev. First off, let me just say happy Easter to all of you. Um, as you know, we are currently looking at the events of Easter here on the channel and today we are concluding that mini-series. Now, just to uh, give you a summary of what we've looked at so far, we've looked at the betrayal of Jesus by Judas and we have also looked at Jesus' death on the cross. So today we come to the end of our mini-series and we finish it in one of the most incredible ways possible, which we can sum up in three words. He is alive. So it's Easter Sunday, but what is that all about? Is it all about chocolate eggs? Now, don't get me wrong, I love myself a chocolate egg. In fact, the bigger the better in my opinion. But Easter is also about a certain tomb. Now, this tomb was empty, much like our chocolate eggs. And that tomb belonged to none other than Jesus. Now, the question we have to ask is why? Why was the tomb empty? Had the tomb been robbed? Or had the body been moved? What did it all mean? Seriously, what is going on? We're going to um, read a little bit of the Bible to hopefully better understand what on earth is going on here. From John chapter 20 verses 11 to 18. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. At first, Mary had absolutely no idea what was going on. Before this uh, reading that we just looked at, um, she sees the empty tomb and panics. She thinks, oh no, someone has either robbed the tomb or moved the body. Uh, and she runs back to the disciples uh, and turns around and goes, Yo, the tomb is empty, and I'm pretty sure some punk has moved Jesus' body. So the disciples, they rush to the empty tomb uh, and have a look inside and see that it is indeed empty. Uh, Mary stays outside and is weeping. And this is when something amazing happens. A man comes up to Mary and asks her, What's up? What's going on? Why are you crying? Now, Mary just thinks this is potentially the gardener and maybe he knows where Jesus' body has been moved to so she asks him you know where's the body what's going on do you know if you tell me I'll go to where it is she does not recognize Jesus until something happens Jesus calls her by name it's at this moment the penny drops Mary recognizes Jesus she's like teacher it's you. You see, Jesus calls her by name and then she recognises him. It's then she gets it. He is alive. We're now going to read Luke chapter 24 verses 36 to 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. 
A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Can you imagine? Here is a man that was supposedly dead, now saying to them, no, I'm, I'm here in the flesh. You can, you can see my wounds. You can, you can touch my injuries. You can, you can see the hand, the holes in my hands and the wound in my side. But still we come to this question, why did this happen? Like, what's this, what is this all about? And thankfully, Jesus explains it. He explains it to his disciples, which means he explains it to us. He points out that the Messiah will suffer and rise. And why was this to be? For the forgiveness of sins. Something that looked like a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake that we could say was a pathetic and very, very sad ending to the story was really just the beginning. You see, Jesus took all the sin on himself, all the bad stuff that we've done, all the bad stuff that is against God, he took that on for himself. And when he died, so did our sin. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with Jesus dying and that's the end of the story. No, no, Jesus beat death. Jesus conquered death. And that means that we don't need to fear death because Jesus has beaten it. Jesus offered himself on the cross so that we could reconnect with God. And by him beating death, it opens up to us eternal life. We can reconnect with God and be with him for eternity. Now, some of us have already got it. We get this and we can be absolutely buzzing when it comes to Easter and be praising that Jesus is alive. For others of us, it's it's all about the chocolate eggs. You know, they all come in all shapes and sizes and all different flavours. And you know what? That's OK. It's OK if for you Easter is all about the chocolate eggs, because you see, Jesus is calling you by name and he's just waiting for you to recognise his voice and turn to him. And I just pray that one day it will click and you will recognise that voice and turn to him. You see, Jesus didn't die on the cross and beat death for the select few. He did it for everybody. And yes, that includes you. My hope and prayer is that one day you recognise that and accept him into your life. That brings us to the end of today's video and to the end of our mini series looking at the Easter story. I hope you have found it helpful. As ever, please do use the comment sections for any questions you have or to start up any discussions you might have around Easter or anything that I have said in this video. If you've enjoyed the video, then please do drop a like and don't forget you can subscribe to the channel for more. You can also drop me a follow over on Instagram and Facebook and the links for all that stuff is in the description below. All that's left for me to say is whether you are celebrating Jesus kicking death and sins, but enjoying all the delicious chocolate eggs or both, I hope you have a very happy Easter and stay safe. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>